Subsequent to that, they came up with a, with a centrifuge. Again, it's a gas centrifuge. Now, you'll hear a lot about centrifuges. Centrifuges are basically spinning tubes in which the heavier uranium, heavier uranium hexafluoride, tends to go to the outer part. They spin these things very fast, as fast as they can. To make it work well, you have to go super fast. I mean, the edge of this thing is going, going a kilometer per second. That's how fast they're spinning. You need the strongest possible materials. And so they came up with this material called meraging steel. You'll read about that, too. Meraging steel, as far as I know, only has two commercial uses. One of them is for centrifuges, for uranium. The other is for golf clubs. Anyway, North Korea seems to have a real interest in golf clubs or centrifuges, can't really tell which. Uh, once again, they have a tube that spins really fast. I, I visited one of these centrifuge plants, and it's really impressive. I mean, it's smaller than this room, and has these tubes in there, and it will separate out you know, your, enough uranium every day for a bomb. And you walk into the room, and the thing is operating, and you listen. You don't hear a thing. Why not? Because these things are so well balanced. They have to be well balanced to go that fast, or they'll just rip themselves apart. So they have them exquisitely balanced. The design of how you build that is really highly classified. But anyway, that's the gas centrifuge. There are other advanced ways, too. There's the laser enrichment, which has actually been accomplished at Livermore, but doesn't seem to be. Uh, and the whole idea here is to turn 0.7% into 90, 95, 100% uranium-235, because otherwise it won't work in the bomb. Now, a little story. Um, there was lots of reason to think in 1990 that Saddam Hussein was designing nuclear bombs. I mean, it turned out he was, okay. But people forget this because they confuse it with what happened in 2000. In 2000, we thought we were going to go in there and find all of his bomb stuff, and there's nothing there. He had dismantled it. And so people say he wasn't doing it, which is true. But in 1990, he was. And people had been searching, and people sometimes, oh, by the way, people forget that President, Carter, President uh, uh, Clinton bombed Baghdad in, 19, you know, in, in 1998. Bombed Baghdad in 1998 to destroy the nuclear facilities that he was suspected were there. That was in 1998. A little bit more of history that we tend to forget. <clears throat> he thought there were nuclear things going on there, too. But part of the reason was, in 1990, we had searched for every possible thing. We, we had looked for gas diffusion plants. Had some suspicious looking things, but gas diffusion plants were big and they really didn't fit. Gas centrifuges, that was the way to go. He was probably doing gas centrifuges. I looked around, but the gas centrifuges are so easy to hide. They fit in rooms smaller than this. They're high tech, and so you try to look for people who are sending in meraging steel, but you can use other types of steel. So there was no clear gas centrifuge plant. Laser enrichment, he didn't seem to have the right kind of scientist to, to do laser enrichment. So it was a big mystery. If he's doing a bomb program, what is he doing? Anyway, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. The U.S. went in, retook Kuwait, decided not to, well, actually reached an accommodation with Saddam. They would not invade Baghdad. They would leave him in power in return for detailed and complete inspections. Back then, he allowed the UN to come in and give detailed and complete inspections. And what came was a shock to me. He was building devices to purify uranium. The UN found them. I have a photograph. It wasn't gas diffusion. It wasn't gas centrifuge. It wasn't laser enrichment. Here's a photograph. The UN found these devices. They were for uranium enrichment. It destroyed them. This is one of the blown up ones. Blown up by the United Nations. That's actually a calutron. The primitive technology that was used in World War II and then abandoned because there were so much better ways to do it. But Saddam Hussein, with his limited resources of only you know, a few billion dollars he could spare, and his limited scientific expertise had gone back to the easiest way to do it, the way Lawrence had done it, named after your university, 
Saddam Hussein built calutrons. So here's we can tell he did no major enrichment of uranium using these calutrons, but here's a calutron, one of Saddam Hussein's calutrons that was destroyed by the United Nations when it was found in 1990. Here's the way a nuclear reactor works. What you do is you take uranium and you, you take ordinary, natural uranium, unenriched. That's what Enrico Fermi was doing. Unenriched uranium. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work because the uranium-238 absorbs the neutrons. But this is what they figured out. If you surround it with carbon, and you put it in little pieces. So when a fission takes place, the two neutrons leave and they don't run into any uranium, any uranium-238, because that would absorb them. That's bad. But they leak out into the carbon. Carbon, it turns out, doesn't absorb neutrons at all. The neutrons bounce off the carbon. The carbon picks up a little bit of energy. It heats up. And the neutrons lose energy, so the neutrons slow down. This carbon is called a moderator. And the purpose of the moderator is to slow the neutrons. Now, so these neutrons slow down after a bunch of bounces. And at some point, they will actually hit their uranium again. And what they had discovered is that slow neutrons are not absorbed on uranium-238. They're just a little bit. So if you slow down the neutrons with a moderator, you can still get a chain reaction. What they really wanted to do was not really get a double, 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 because this thing would blow up. What they really wanted to do was get, on average, one of the neutrons. So you want one, you get uranium-235 gives fission fragments, typically two fission fragments, plus two neutrons. One of those neutrons, you want to hit another uranium-235. The other neutron, you'd like to hit uranium-238, making plutonium. So this way, Every fission leads to one more fission. So once this thing gets going, it just keeps them going at the same level. It doesn't get bigger, 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 and explode. That's what a nuclear reactor is. So a nuclear reactor is, it has a moderator. That's the real key. The moderator means you can work with unenriched uranium. There are other moderators you could use. In, 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 in the United States, we tend to use water as a moderator. Okay, water as a moderator uh, won't work with unenriched uranium. You have to, you have, to have 3% uranium-235. So we use slightly enriched, what's called reactor-grade uranium. That's produced at Oak Ridge. So this is the idea. Uh, this is the basic idea, and, and I'm going to be talking primarily about two different designs. One of them is the carbon design, the other is the water design. In the United States, most of our power reactors have these tubes coming down into water. And this whole thing is in a big vessel full of water. And, and it, other than that, the neutrons come out, they're slowed down, they come back in, and one of them on average produces uh, a plutonium, and one on the average produces another fission, so it keeps on going. In the beginning, you set it up so that you produce double, 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 double until you get the level you want. And then you put in control rods that absorb neutrons that make this thing keep in a steady state. So here's a key thing to remember about the nuclear reactor, in a re nuclear chain reaction in a reactor. You're not doubling anymore. You want to keep it going at a constant rate. You make this plutonium, and then every once in a while you pull these things out, and you separate out the plutonium, okay? Um, so that's called reprocessing. You've got to know this word. You'll see this in the news all the time. That separates the plutonium. 